Okay, welcome back to the Mechanic Geek channel and uh, it's time for a video. It was a long time since I did one. Today we're going to talk about the, the, the solar station trailer. This is used when the power failed in uh, the house. In the winter it happens sometimes. Uh, especially with um, icy storms. Well, not, it's necessary in the, in the, in the freezing winter, but uh, in the time when um, farmers do something dumb, like plowing too deep. Sometimes it's like a ground cable and a tractor comes by in the evening and then uh, rips all the cables out. Then uh, it's going to take two days or something to get them to that fixed. For other, for other people, oh, two days, not too bad. I have weeks without power. Yeah, some Americans have that issue in the winter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <clears throat> a Deutsche Stecker is it here? That's logical because my neighboring country is Deutschland. Um, so yeah, it's still working pretty well. No issues there. It's sitting here for four years maybe. Uh, on the side here we have a Yeti. It's kind of strange to see a portable thing in here, but uh, this is a uh, the, bat the internal battery is deleted. I use it for my little uh, four wheeler bike, and uh, these wires go to the battery. Uh, there's a fuse on the battery, I think so. And so, yeah, you have AC power, 5 volt USB, and 12 volt, but uh, this one doesn't work so well. This thing thinks the battery is really low, even though this thing is saying it's uh, full. But uh, yeah, uh, there's another inverter down here. This one is 120 watts, just enough to light the whole home and uh, charge some communication devices and stuff, and uh, maybe other things. The danger of a power failure here in this country because we are below sea level. So if the um, if the gates stop working and there's a storm coming up, uh, this area where I live could be one meter fifty underneath water. So yeah, that's a that's a disaster. So you want to charge your radio and stuff and keep on the height of the news and stuff and uh, and if you in a disaster zone. Maybe contact your local ham community and uh, see what they're doing and coordinate a plan together or something. Because um, the disaster control in Netherlands is unclear how good it is. Um, uh, because um, we had a flood disaster in 62. That was absolutely horrendous. I think uh, something like 62,000 houses were like... Uh, Totally destroyed. Uh, one town got flooded. A couple more later on. That was pretty disastrous because uh, you know, gate and dike uh, and uh, gate and dike technologies for the ocean was kind of a limited technology back in the day. Just sandbags, I guess. <laughs> but now we are the masters in water water uh, defending. So yeah. Uh, we have panel lights, so if you, uh, you do something at night, you have some extra lighting. There's a secondary switch for auxiliary things. You can connect whatever. It's a 12 volt switch, so you can make an extra 12 volt socket and make it switch on this one. But you don't have uh, a uh, turn off limit. This one turns off after low battery, that's pretty handy. You don't want to destroy the batteries because it's slow. Um, yeah. These black things are fuses. Must have, of course. If you build this uh, system, you need to have fuses on 12 volts. Here's one. I calculate how much power things require and then uh, get the appropriate view so it's even more safe so they don't snap too late when something goes wrong uh, yeah this one was pulled out because um, 
there's a charging cable going to the tractor keeping it full of power in the winter because a little solar panel is sometimes not good enough and it works pretty well until uh, I left the cable the cable I think it's one of these I left it in the grass and in the winter was fine after the the summer came around and uh, all the cables were stuck in the ground I need to move the trailer to build a little uh, 4 meter antenna and 20 meter antenna on here and uh, I yanked the connector off so yeah that can cause short circuits so I removed this, the fuse and uh, the connector is still, still in the grass somewhere over there it was really high and the batteries are in the other door Aluminium roof, military, mili military grade goodness. There's two fat car batteries in here, they're for SUVs. Um, this is supposed to be for the Kia, but the left one did not fit. I ordered the wrong one, but uh, not a big deal, it can be used on this thing. Actually, you're supposed to use solar batteries or marine batteries for this thing, but. Uh, it's only for backups actually and charging vehicle batteries and uh, maybe powering some tools and video lights on this thing. So yeah, if the workshop doesn't have any power I use this thing as well. Pretty handy. Uh, use an extension uh, lead with solid core. Don't ever do that. It's actually dumb. I thought it was a can This thing can hire. High current will do, but if, if this bends too much, it will snap inside and make it dangerous. So I need to get those plugs off and hang it in the workshop for normal use. Uh, it's a SeaTac charger made in Sweden. This is um, to charge vehicle batteries, of course. And when the solar system has a problem, like in deep winter, with only solar for four hours a day, sometimes not good enough because the freezing cold keeps the batteries down, even though the panel is 140 watts. Uh, I use the SeaTac as well to charge these batteries. Uh, this the amp hour limit is somewhere around 160 or something. Oh, uh, there's some uh, descriptions over here and warnings. The cable's weakened, so I have zip ties around it. So, yeah, after all the charges I saw on the internet, uh, this one is one of the best because uh, the Genius Bar is kind of a baloney. And does it have the the frequency modulation mode to keep the crystal the crystal um, problem down in the batteries? When you leave a battery for a long time, you can have crystal formations after a long time. Of course, I'm a cheapskate, so all the construction is homemade. <laughs> The trailer is from a caravan from the 80s. Everything is rotted out, except for the steel frame. It's pretty nice still. No holes anywhere. I know it's brown, but uh, it's it's no there's no holes anywhere. So I can fix this thing up and make it go down the road. <laughs> and have some bolts through the freaking thingies. But uh, it's a new wooden deck because it's totally caved in on that side. <laughs> Pretty nice little trailer. If I had the cash, I like to build, uh, move the solar panel over here, and build a little house over here for for radio amateur stuff. But uh, we don't need it anymore when you have a little tractor. 
I'm a radio amateur listener hobbyist. I don't have a license, so I only listen. I have an OR radio that only trans, that only uh, only only receives, <laughs> only transmits. That would be useless. Um, yeah, there's earth cables, some antenna cables. And if you're getting interested too, maybe um, type in YouTube the, sec the secrets of shortwave radio. And you find these uh, three dudes talking about it, it's pretty cool. And they're they're kind of comical as well. I forgot the name. I, f I think uh, their channel name is... Is... Um, the... Something about Rogi? I don't know. But uh, I will set my plank down here and set my radios on there and uh, enjoy some... Uh, Mexican, Italian, freaking British, German guys on the air. And uh, if you have live in a country with a lot of thunder, this thing is a must have. This will, uh, if there's any high current in your antenna that can possibly destroy your radio, this thing will take care of that. Now the high current comes in. There's a uh, sharp needle at the center of the cable. Uh, the high current will pass to the ground to a copper rod in the ground. So, yeah. This is a 90s Kubota. One of the best ever made. After, tw after 10 years, I never did any major repairs, so that's pretty nice. Uh, except some other important things like the clutch adjusting, brakes, brakes left and right adjusting, because the left one was braking earlier than the right one. That's kind of dangerous when you go fast on the road. <clears throat> that's typical with tractors, you will not always have uh, those brakes adjusted. Once in five years, maybe, if you drive it on the road much. Maybe every year. I, it's better to say it's every year, to be safe. Because if you drive on the road, you use the brakes way more than just off-road. Cleaning roads, digging for, for people. One day I had to make a little uh, ditch to make the gravel road drain better. That took longer than expected. Freaking rocks, man. <coughs> so yeah. This panel over here is uh, working pretty well for, I don't know, four years maybe. This system was built in uh, 2016 maybe. I don't remember, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, there's a tag here somewhere. Uh, where's the tag? Oh, oh. there's a plug for the for uh, charge the vehicle battery. It's ripped off by the grass. It's four cores. The reason I use all the four all four cores, there's actually a control cradle for a satellite thingy or something. But the copper is pretty thick if you use all four, so you, you can charge batteries better when you use all the cables. So like the other half for minus, the other one for plus. In this case this is plus and this is the ground. Uh. Uh. There's a little plug hanging there, that's for the radio setup and tractor. Um, yeah, I think this is it for this one. If you want to, if you want to l learn more about and uh, and listen to all the radio shows, um, go to the shit. What is the name? Something about radio geeks, Netherland. Uh, go to. I put a link in the below section uh, so you can click on there and get to the 
to the other channel for the radio stuff. So I have four different channels for different categories. So, uh, anyways, this is for this one. Keep your dick in the vice.